Welcome to Making with Mark. In this video, we'll build this robot from scratch. Stick around to see how I do it. For this build, I gathered some parts from uh, junk bins that I thought would go together pretty well to make a robot. So you can see I've got several different things here. Some computer parts, parts from an old printer, some automotive pieces, all kinds of little things, some electrical stuff. This is actually a plug from some type of appliance that I bought in the past. This is maybe some type of European plug. I just thought it would make a cool robot head as soon as I saw it. So that's kind of the inspiration. And this is a, a little computer speaker. When I saw this, I thought, oh, that's that'll make a cool eye for the robot. And this is just a little circuit board that I had. I actually have several of these from things that I've broken down, like old computer mice and things like that. This is actually a, a rubber cover for a toggle switch. And when I saw that, I thought, you know what? This would make cool little arms off the side of the robot. So you'll see what I do with those later. I'm going to use some spoons to make arms. I'll show you how I'll do that. It's going to be similar to this robot uh, that you see that I'm already sort of in progress on. I'm going to start from scratch on this build and we'll finish this one up sometime later. So here's a couple pieces that I initially went with to hold the legs. And then here's the upper leg. These are actually rollers from an old laser jet printer. More bits and pieces that I've picked up. These are actually some springs from a brake uh, kit. I had those left over. Of course, those go in the junk bin. And then some other little plastic computer parts. And then I have some other little gears, some little plastic tubing and washers. Those will all come in handy when I'm making the arms and legs. So I'm gonna use the circuit board as the chest and another one for the back. And here you can sort of see the look that I'm going for. So I've selected a second piece. This will be for the back. And I found one that's almost exactly the same size. So I took some measurements just so I'll know how long the sides and top pieces need to be. And then use a metal ruler and a razor knife to get nice crisp cut lines on those pieces. And I'll glue the styrene to the circuit boards using super glue and this little tip. It's gonna help me to control the amount of glue I'm putting on there. It's very handy if you haven't used one of these, I highly recommend it. And also I'll be using some baking powder. You can see here I've got my tray that I keep close by. And this will help the glue to kick off and almost create a sort of a weld. So I've used this quite a bit. We'll use it a good bit in this project. It works really well. I'm just building up, adding the side, and you can see once I stick the two parts together, put a little bit of that baking powder on, and I usually just Take the spoon, tap off the excess. It's going to get a little dusty and dirty um, just to be forewarned, but it's really worth the step. It makes a huge difference and it really helps to speed up the build time and it makes the joints very, very strong. I'm also using a bit of sandpaper just to, to sort of scuff and rough up the edges of the styrene, and this also will promote the adhesion. And again, more bacon powder. You can actually do layers of bacon powder and glue if you want to build up an area or fill in gaps or kind of create like a faux weld seam. It works really well for that. And that pretty much wraps up the torso of the robot. And now we're ready to move on and start adding details. I added a couple of pieces to the top sides of the torso, and this will fill a gap and also reinforce where the arms join. And looking at this robot so far, I, I don't want to join the head directly to the torso. So I actually found the lid to a water bottle fit just perfect underneath the head. It just slipped right in place, and this worked out really well. I used some 220 grit sandpaper to just scuff the top and bottom of the lid. That's going to make sure that when I use the super glue and the baking powder that this head sticks really well to the torso. Thank you. 
And now it's on to making the legs. And I have to say, my first attempt, which you'll see here in a moment, didn't go quite as planned, but it's okay because the majority of the work in actually building the legs uh, ended up being just fine. I was able to repurpose these, but the way you see them here is going to change from the end product. So, you know, I had grabbed pieces. These are some computer pieces that I had from my scrap bins. Just sort of built them up using a variety of different uh, pieces, old computer parts. And then this is a drywall anchor. So I just basically used the printer parts, the computer parts, drywall anchor, some other little bits and pieces to build the legs out. And of course I used those springs that I had mentioned earlier. And for the most part, I was really happy uh, with the way things were going. I, I was happy with the legs especially, but not the stance of the droid. It was flimsy and just too wide. Just wasn't happy at all about the width of the legs, but I'll fix that in due time. For now, I'm gonna move on to the arms. And I made these by cutting some pieces out of a plastic spoon. Just use my Dremel and a cutting wheel. And then I used a sanding tool to sort of work on the ends. Basically, I'm just kind of making a concave shape. And that's so that these plastic washers that I have will glue nice and snug right into that end there. And from here, I'm just building out the upper part of the arm that's going to extend over and connect to the robot's body. And I'm just using some plastic pipe for this. I found that to work really well. I cut down those toggle switch covers a bit and then fitted in the upper arm and it fit just perfect and it actually gave me the ability to kind of move the arm around and position it the way I wanted to and I was really happy with the way that turned out. For the hands I took the remaining pieces of the spoons that I had cut earlier and just marked off a small portion here out on the edge of the spoon. Then I took my Dremel with the cutting wheel once more and just carved out the end there very carefully. And this is going to give us a base to attach the fingers to. Then I took some old 12 gauge electrical wire that I had laying around, cut some little pieces for fingers, and then I just glued those on to the hand piece. For the palm, I just took some more of that styrene sheet. I cut out a small piece that would fit right in the palm of the hand. And then I glued that in and used some more of the baking powder. Then it was time to go ahead and attach the arms to the torso. I'm just adding some super glue here. I had scuffed up the upper sides of the torso for some extra adhesion. Lined the arms up and then just made sure both sides were uh, symmetrical to one another. And also angled the arms so that they would have the bend that I was looking for. Now it's time to turn our attention to the robot's head. So I attached the speaker piece with the wires coming off of it. I thought that looked really cool. And I'm just adding some more super glue just to make sure that that thing stays in place. And here again, attaching the wires that were already attached to the speaker. I just wrapped those around to the back of the head. And I really wanted to add some detail to the droid's chest. So I found this reference photo for some inspiration. This is a Star Wars droid and I like the chest piece, the detail there, so I decided to recreate that using some of that sheet styrene on our droid. Now things are looking much better except for the legs, the way they attach there. And in case you're wondering, it's now time to address that. So I took uh, and just rebuilt a new center piece there to hold the legs. Used a couple of lids from water bottles. Repurposed the same legs I had built earlier. I was really happy with the way the legs turned out, but 
was able to modify those, rejoin them, and I thought the end result here turned out much, much better than the first attempt. And after doing some final details, we were now able to move on and get ready for a coat of primer. And for the paint for this droid, I chose a matte pale sage spray paint. This is a Cryline Fusion all-in-one paint and primer. I was very happy with the way this turned out and I can't wait to reveal the end product. So I started adding some details, first gray, and like usual, decided to sort of balance out the gray uh, components all across the robot and that's just to give it a good balanced look. So here I'm working on some of the details on the arms. And I also painted this panel on the front just to sort of keep your eye moving across the robot. I also decided to paint this face piece a little bit darker shade. I mixed in some green and some black just to darken up this color and I'm really looking for a contrast from the other gray color. So I'm trying to create several different shades of gray just to keep your eyes moving around and create some visual interest. And then I decided to go ahead and paint some of these hoses and pipes and I added some darker colors to the legs and then the speaker mouthpiece part went ahead and painted black. And I'm just trying to highlight different pieces of the robot. This eyepiece I really wanted to stand out so I went with black. And the fingers, instead of going black, I went with sort of a, a matte dark gray color. And again, I'm just looking to create some visual interest, keep your eye moving around and not have too many parts of the same color. I did want to retain that matte pale sage for most of the body parts. Now my favorite part, distressing. I did have a little something different this time. I decided to just go with one distressing wash so I mixed up this sort of dirty, grungy color and watered that down like usual. Worked it into the cracks and crevices. Just went all the way around the robot. Especially, you know, paying attention to some of the, the darker, lower areas, especially some of the shadowy areas. I was really happy with the final result. this video please consider subscribing to the channel and also check out the links to these other two videos that I think you'll enjoy thanks for watching